about issues and solutions. That's really what it's all about. But, but there are some major things like money. Money is always a major problem. A lot of times, if in fact you file to run for office, it doesn't say that you have to have X number of dollars. It just say file, put your name down, your phone number, and, and you're gone, and there you are. On the other hand, when you, after you've done that, then the idea is that if you don't have the 20 to 30,000 bucks, you don't get the, the interviews, if you will, to share your issues. Uh, if anything, you're left out of the cause. And in many ways, the person who doesn't have the money may have better issues and whatever, and solutions, if you will, to the problem that we have. So that's, that's one major issue. And then the other is that uh, when, when one goes to interviews or this, things of this nature, going through one's background, is, that's another issue. You know, how far do you go? Uh, to what extent do you go? Um, there, there's a lot of things. But, but anyway, I've got, I've got some experts here with me today. And, and what I'm going to do to get this thing started is, first off, we're just going to go around the room. Just introduce yourself just briefly. My I'm Don Dupay. I was a retired Portland police officer. I'm an author of this wonderful book called Behind the Badge in River City. It's and, a story for you. And you've seen Don many times. You're going to see him more often anyway. <laughs> tea, then you got tea. Um. <coughs> My name is Teresa Griffin Kennedy. I'm Don's wife and um, also the editor of this book. And I've published two books myself. Right. And we're both working on more books. And uh, we're, we're politically both active. We're politically yeah, active. I know and that very much and so. we're, we're writers. Yeah, and we've that. both recently published opinion pieces in um, some news Good. sources. And I'm going to come back to you so we can <laughs> throw that on the table. Landa? Yes, I am a campaign manager for Lenita Duke running for. City Council position one. Good, good. And got landing on him because again he's got a candidate that he's represented, which is great. And how does he deal with that piece aspect of it too? Okay, so so why, why don't we just get get right into the to the meat of the matter, if you will? Um, there was an article that appeared. One, the first one was in the Willamette Week, April thirteenth. Yeah. April thirteenth, right? Again, it was in regards to Fred Stewart mm -hmm. and uh, his relationship with his daughter, right? Right. And it dates back that 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 particular that particular incident dates back to. September of 2013. 2013. Very interesting time frame. Okay. okay, all right. We got that piece. And what was the nature of that uh, of that that particular article? What, 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 what the nature of that article by Willamette Week was tabloid journalism. It was uh, a piece that they exaggerated in an effort to destroy his political candidacy. Unfortunately for them, it's had the opposite effect because I published my own response to it April 22nd, which was very popular and has been warmly received. And as a result of that, um, Steve Dean wrote his own poorly sourced, that's what the poorly Oregonian. written. That's, that's the Oregonian. Right. Um, he wrote that May 7th, and it was published May 7th. And then two days later, May 9th, Don responded to it with his own. Uh, opinion piece, which also took off. And the result has been that now people know who Fred is, and he's getting more supporters, and he's getting people calling in and saying, I wasn't going to vote for you before, but now I am. Mm -hmm. And he's been getting donations, and it's had uh, the opposite impact, I think, that Willamette Week and the Oregonian had anticipated. Was there any rationale as to why the, uh, why the Willamette Week published the article at the beginning? Um, I think they did it s simply because they're struggling. They're a struggling print newspaper. Their readership is is waning. Um, they've had to downsize. They've had financial problems, much like the Oregonian, and they thought that it would be controversial and that would, it would increase readership. Um, the reality is that when their article came out on the Willamette Week website, um, there were people that were furious. A large number of white Portlanders were very critical of Willamette Week and Nigel Jaquist. They published, um, they commented, they left very critical comments on the website, and those comments were deleted from Willamette Week, and the same thing happened at the Oregonian website. There were more than 35 comments um, that were critical of the Oregonian and Steve Dean after his opinion piece came out um, May 7th, and those comments by Portlanders were deleted, over 35 of them. Um, so basically, Willamette Week and the Oregonian decided to destroy Fred Stewart's chances um, politically, and it's completely backfired. Okay, but well, let's just say <clears throat> that, that, that whole rationale was to basically give the kind of background mm -hmm. on the individuals as, as someone was saying that in some way, shape, or form, uh, the public needs to know. Sure. Because this individual, if elected, would would not be the kind of representation that say that the populace would right. would tend to. Win. I think their 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 ambition was to show that Fred Stewart is not suited for politics, and I don't agree with that at all. Mm -hmm. um, he's 
very positive, he's very proactive, he's one of the smartest people I've ever talked to. Um, his knowledge of business and money and housing issues is just really impressive. I think he would be a, a, a ideal political candidate for Portland. You know, I might add, and then Lynn, come on in there too, when you start thinking about it, all of us for that matter who are running for office have stories to tell. Yeah. And all of us have similar kinds of, well, when I say similar background, bankruptcies and things of right. that nature. And if in fact, and I'm just throwing something on the table, if in fact those issues were, were pertinent, if you will, maybe that should have been listed in the in the filing process. Mm -hmm. You know, if there's any background within a certain period of time, because that's what normally happens, even if you go through a bankruptcy aspect of it, after a certain period of time, it, it sort of is sponged off your record, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and that people recognize that. What do you think about that, Van? I n had a feeling that the story on Fred Stewart was going to backfire against those uh, newspapers. It showed Fred to be a real human being. Right. Yeah. And the biggest problem that we have in politics is we have people who are plastic. They're not real. They're not trustworthy. And Fred seemed real and trustworthy there. So yeah. I, 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 I think it's, it, it was a great article. I, I'm glad it backfired on them. Mm -hmm. It, people are generally sympathetic towards someone who has a problem with their teenager. Because yeah. if anybody has a teenager, they they have had problems. <laughs> sure, sure. How do you think they're going to react to that at this point? I now? think it's caught Nigel Jaquist and Steve Dean by surprise. But and my these issue, right, right, two right. right. Um, you know, they can say, oh, Mark, you know, Nigel Jaquist can say, oh, Mark Zussman made me do it all he wants, but the reality is uh, he's Zussman the writer. Is, Zussman is he's the, the editor. Yeah, okay. um, the, the reality is, the reason I objected so strongly is because of the immorality of seducing a 19-year-old girl into that kind of situation. Mm -hmm. um, it's true that she contacted Willamette Week about a year ago. Okay. She's definitely <laughs> been involved in the story from the very beginning. She wanted to get back at her dad. She's got issues with her mother. Her mother has a very questionable past. Um, but for them to to seduce this young girl who really doesn't know any better, she's only 19. I mean, seriously, mm -hmm. what does she know? She's a bright girl. She has a wonderful future, but she's only 19. For for Willamette Week and the Oregonian to, to, to do this, to get in between a relationship uh, with a father and a daughter to get to try to sabotage the relationship between a father and a daughter to me is morally reprehensible. Well, tell me this now. At one point in time, he ran against uh, he, he ran against Nick Fish. Fish. Nick Fish, right? right. He ran against Nick Fish. <coughs> was that was that brought up during that particular time? Steve Dean tried to insinuate that that was the reason that he was upset that Hunter had gotten contact information from Nick Fish. The reality is that Fred and I have talked numerous times and he told me that he's been friendly with Nick Fish since I think 2008 when he ran against him. I mean, he's a professional. He's not going to be resentful. He's not going to be vindictive. He's been friendly with, with Nick Fish. He's been friendly with other people that he ran against and didn't you know, and lost to. So that insinuation that he was somehow angry at Nick Fish is just absolutely false. Mm -hmm. He's been this friendly with Nick Fish for a long time. Good on, let, me get, let me give you my perspective on Steve Dean. He's had his hours cut. He's down to one column a week mm -hmm. because the Oregonian keeps getting smaller and smaller. Right. Jeff Mapes went to OPB. I don't know where Steve Dean is going. But look at it this way. The upper management of the Oregonian said it would be a good idea to send Steve Dean, air fare and all, clear back to Manhattan, New York City, just to interview this girl, just to dig up more dirt hmm. on poor Bruce Stewart, or Bruce, uh, not Fred you, Stewart. Fred Stewart. <laughs> they went, you know, they went to all that trouble. <laughs> that's, that's the kind of story they thought right. it was. Right. It's Bullshit journalism. Mm -hmm. And the mm -hmm. other thing and is... And shame on the Oregonian yeah. management for doing it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what mm -hmm. made me mad. Mm -hmm. That's why I had to respond. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. the, the other thing that was included in Steve Dean's uh, opinion piece is a statement that Hunter Stewart made on her Facebook page. I've analyzed this statement in detail, and there are several inconsistencies. Um, and she has an issue, like a lot of 19-year-olds, with being truthful. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I discovered several inconsistencies and several things that she glossed over um, and wasn't completely truthful about. So, but I just, I just still think that it's a terrible thing. And that's thing. a 19-year-old? 
Right. You know what I mean? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And she, I don't think she even understands how fortunate she's been. I mean, she lived a comfortable life. She has had cars and computers and cell phones. She had braces. She had a lot of things a lot of Portlanders don't get. Mm. You know, she was 15 and 16 years old and driving her father's Jaguar. You know, I mean, I just think it's really tragic that Willamette Week and the Oregonian um, think so little of her future with future relationship with her father that, that they would get involved in such a tawdry story mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. trying to uh, trying to smear his name you know try, I mean the title of J Nigel Jaquis's piece uh, Fred Stewart pins his I mean the title is outrageous it's mm -hmm. it's pure yellow mm -hmm. journalism mm -hmm. um, so yeah <laughs> The well, whole situation has backfired, and I don't think they expected well, it. Well, let's think about that, too, a little bit, because I, I've run on, on several different occasions, and, and, and it's, it, when, you, when, you, when you're interviewing, if you will, with these folks, one, they got the whole idea of trivia. I, I never liked the idea of trivia because I, I was thinking more serious thing, but it's about mm -hmm. the issues, mm -hmm. the issues and the solutions to these mm -hmm. issues. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not about trivia, and naturally since then, I've just opted not to go. Mm -hmm. I just don't get involved mm -hmm. in, in any of those so-called interviews aspect mm -hmm. of it. One, how do they get the message, though? I mean, that's, what we're, that's why we're doing the show. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like saying this has been a standard uh, for you. This has not been just, it just, just so happened to be in Fred, but this has been happening on and on and on. I mean, every time you pick up the paper about sure. anybody running for office, even today's paper, I, I noticed that um, there was a big push on, on uh, one of the mayoral candidates, uh, Sarah, mm -hmm. and right. it was in the Willamette Week today. And, and then, but then there was this, this picture, uh, this photo of her being booked. Sure. I thought that was interesting, you know what I mean? But not, does that have anything, to, you know what I'm saying? So, well, so in, terms of, in terms of motivation for these to. stories, I think that the motivation is ultimately racism. Yeah. We have a white <laughs> establishment in Portland, and I don't think that a lot of these white leaders want people of color in city council. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to come out and say it. <laughs> That's what I said in my piece. I'm appalled at the racism that this this uh, election cycle has brought forth. Yeah. I've yeah. lived here for a long time and I didn't believe this town was as racist as it is. Mm -hmm. and I know you don't want to talk about it, but I should have for oh, you I do. too. I, mean, I, just, I, uh, I should have for you I, too because the media largely ignored you. Mm -hmm. You weren't invited to the, to the debates. It was like you weren't there. Yeah. When I saw the uh, ad on the, for the, one of the TV channels that said we're having a debate, there's a picture of two white guys. They're politically the same. One has brown eyes, one has blue eyes. And where are you? And where are the girls? And where are the other people? It's, I was appalled yeah, yeah, yeah. at the racism this brought up. Yeah. I'm ashamed of my city. Well, I'm gonna try to give them some sense of identity, you know, in terms of understanding, because you're right. Because when I think about, um, I don't do respect our local uh, OPB, yeah. or organ, organ public broadcasting yeah. aspect of it. You, like you're right, two Oregonians went to, uh, two people from the Oregonians yeah. went to OPB, yeah. and Jeff Mapes and Anna Griffith. Mm -hmm. And I knew both of them. Another one from the Oregonian Another left. from the Oregonian, and uh, I knew both of them. Mm -hmm. and I, I remember when I filed a run for office, I called up Jeff Mapes, mm -hmm. got him on the phone, and said, hey, I just filed a run for mayor of the city mm -hmm. of Portland. And, uh, and he said, Bruce, I'll get right back to you. Yeah. And I have not heard from him since. Of course yeah. not. And yeah. uh, and then naturally you, you, you think about the, it was, it was, it was what's very interesting about the whole piece. They just recently did a poll, OPB, mm -hmm. and uh, I was number three. <laughs> but yet they were still looking at the sure. the four top. I'm sorry, Bruce, folks, but you're invisible to yeah, the well, media. You know, but, you know, but I'd <laughs> like to hear what Landon thinks. Landon, yeah. give me yeah. give me a, give me a feel. <laughs> you know what I think. <laughs> what, in fact, what, what about Lenita? How how was she received in in the media? Uh, Renita, um, Lenita is actually received very well. She's trending up uh, in the polls. There's a lot of buzz on uh, social media about her. No, but what about the media from the standpoint of calling her as far as it, as none, far as debates, none, and debates, none, anything of none, that nature? None at all. None at all. None at all. They are interested in what they're interested in, and that's it. Right. They do not want to hear about anything else, which really deprives the city of Portland the best that Portland has to offer. Mm -hmm. yeah. it, it, when we have inclusive, inclusive practices, mm -hmm. whether it's housing, whether it's uh, the police department, whether it's uh, education, whether it's employment, when we have inclusive practices, 
practice throughout the city, the city is a better place right. mm -hmm. for everybody. Mm -hmm. yeah. But when we separate people, mm -hmm. it creates a greater problem than any of us can handle. Mm -hmm. The election process, to me, is very disheartening in America. Yeah. That they would single you out, not even have you in an article, <laughs> and you're number three. But we will put Sarah on a row up. Right. Because why? We want to see somebody that looks like us. Right. And they are cheating the city of what is best for the city of Portland. Mm -hmm. They would rather have the establishment be the same way it's always been, rather than change and make things better. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's disheartening. They look at you like they're the, they're the right side and you're nobody. When I ran a sheriff in 2006, from Multnomah County Sheriff. I was interviewed by the Oregonian. And the first question they asked me was, oh, how much money do you have? How do you think you can do? They didn't care about my platform. They didn't ask me about Wapato. They didn't ask me about the homeless, what I would do about the police department if I was a sheriff. How much money did you spend? And then they put a little picture, thumbnail picture of me on the page, front page, that says, pot smoking grandpa who would be sheriff. Gee. I mean, they wrote me off, I'm not, I had some really good ideas, yeah, and I ran against sure. Bernie Justo, yeah. who was a creep. Who was a crook. Who was a crook. Let's call it what it is. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Absolute power. Well, well, you Absolutely. know, the, the thing, uh, I guess the other thing that so I, 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 I want to throw on the table is that um, in, in many ways, we've read it many times over, that the city, the city of Portland, has been identified as the whitest city in the, in the country, yeah. in, this, in, the, yeah. in, this, in, the, in the in the United States. And people, and people that. got upset about it. You know, people got upset about it. <laughs> right. And you would think, well, okay, if you're upset about something, then what are we going to do about it? Mm -hmm. And that's, why, that's one of the reasons why I'm having this, is this piece here right now, <laughs> because d doing, doing something about it is not digging, a, digging the hole deeper and deeper, if you will, because you're right. I mean, we've got folks here that are very articulate, especially some of the folks that are running for office today. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've got, uh, uh, I think there's another mayoral candidate. She happens to be an African American. Was it Dora? Uh, Deborah. Deborah. Very articulate woman and uh, good ideas and whatever. And she's also cited to me about how she had been treated, mm -hmm. if you will, and, 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 uh, and as far as debates are concerned and whatever. And the same thing with another, another uh, I think a woman was running for, for, I think she's running for the, the these. Seat four. Seat four. Yeah, the, and I, I know who you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think she's running for county. Mm -hmm. One's running for county and one's running mm -hmm. for the. Uh, um, for the for the House of Representatives mm -hmm. aspect of it, okay. and they were telling me also some of the some of the things that they were coming up with and, and the problems that we're having, and they were thanking me that for giving them the opportunity to come over here and, as, and do it. As, you know. as I said in my editorial, Portland is happy to have a wonderful, thriving black community, but don't run for office. Because they're That's, yeah. then you're stepping over the line. Right. We want you in the community. We're happy to have you here spending money. But don't cross that line. Don't you dare run for office. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's, it's and just that, that just gives our town a terrible. Well, we do have issues yeah. within our own community. Well, right we, we do have issues within <laughs> our own yeah, community. We, we need to work on our yeah, unity. We, yeah, yeah, we yeah. need to work on our unity. Yeah. But that's beside the point. Yeah. 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 The point is, is that we have to be more inclusive in this city. Absolutely. Right. We have yeah. to be more inclusive. It can't be, I love your barbecue, I just right. don't like right. you in my neighborhood. Right. Right. Exactly. exactly. I like your Chinese food, but I don't like Chinese people. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. I like Mexican, but guess what? No more tortillas. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that's important. That's what you're saying. Right. It's, right. It's, it's, it's not inclusive. It's it's we, have yeah. we have burls. We have burls. And the thing that frustrates me is that a lot of these guys, Nigel Jaquist, Steve Dean, they really think that they're liberal. They really think that they don't harbor racist beliefs. That's the beauty of liberalism. Right. <laughs> but the reality is their behavior proves otherwise. You know, they don't write about issues that are important to people of color. They don't care. They have their little special interest articles and then they do things like what they did to Fred Stewart, you know? Well, like, that, like many of us. Yeah. yeah myself included aspect of it. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, my point yeah. is the way I was running mine was from experience. You know, I, mean, I, I sort of knew where I was. Yeah. I was listening to... I didn't to, know my place, but I knew where I was. <laughs> <laughs> I was listening to a, a debate, a video of Sean Davis. Yeah. And he was interviewed, I can't, I don't know who it was who was interviewing him, but 
they asked him this one question, and I thought to myself, wow. They asked him whether he owned his own home or whether he rented his home. And I thought, mm -hmm. that is the most classist thing to ask. Does it matter? Yeah. Is it relevant to his to his desire to run for office, whether he rents or owns? Mm -hmm. But that's that, that, that classist attitude yeah. that mm -hmm. so many people in Portland have. You know, I just... I was they really asked me surprised. How I got to the interview? Did I take public transportation? Or did I drive my car? This was I in drove my car. What kind of a car do you have? I happen to have a Cadillac. Yeah. Bernie drove his county car. But I mean, what the hell does it have to do with the way I got there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, one of the things make me look more <laughs> plebeian or something. Right. Well, one of the things right. that I've recognized through the years, through my times of running for office, I can say that today, most of the folks who are covering, if you will the elections and things like that, they have no background. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if they don't have any background, that means they're not familiar with what the issues are. Right. And a lot of times they're basically asking you the issues and also the solutions. And if you don't know what, where, you, where you've been, how are you going to even be able to respond to the response that the candidate might have had? Mm -hmm. The candidate might be giving you the right answer, but you don't know how to interpret because it has to be a, there has to be a translation in terms of after you've spoken to a person. That's the, that's the thing that I've seen. Mm -hmm. I've seen it in articles. I've, I've seen it just in just trying to articulate where you are. And, uh, and then, then, like I said, the trivia thing and this, mm -hmm. that, and the other <laughs> just blows your mind. I mean, Some gonna, of these people are too young and they haven't been in Oregon that, or Portland right. very that's long. Right. That's right. You yeah. know, I've been here for a long time. I have a good perspective of it. These kids that are up now 25, 30 years old, they haven't been here long enough. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, they don't mm -hmm. know what's been going on in Oregon. They don't know what a rich tradition of racism we have from yeah. Vanport on up. Oh yeah, oh yeah, you know, you know. Very, very much so. <laughs> any, any, any thoughts? I wrote, the, I wrote the history book on it. Part of it. Any, any, any additional thoughts, sir? On, uh, no. <laughs> you, 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 you should comment. We're here. I mean, that's what well, we're about. you know, I, I, I think that, again, we have to be more inclusive all the way around. And um, definitely that's Ms. Duke's uh, position, that we need an inclusive city that works for everybody. Uh, racism will always exi exist in America. It will always exist I in the so city. Too. But in order to bring about change, we have to be inclusive of different communities of all colors, not just... I agree. I agree. You know, a few people. Uh, the tragedy of what we have on city council now is that three of the five people in city council all live in southwest Portland. Mm -hmm. One lives in East Moreland and Fish lives somewhere between the river and uh, 33rd. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have four people who drive past the misery every morning, or actually they don't drive past the misery yeah. because yeah. you don't see homeless people on Barber Boulevard That's or right. Capitol Highway. You don't see peop homeless people uh, south of Holgate. Mm -hmm. right. You see them all on the east side of the river mm -hmm. between Holgate and the, Clum and, and the Columbia River. Mm -hmm. It's a tragedy. That's why we need change in City Hall. Mm -hmm. That's why we need you, Bruce. Mm -hmm. well, well, it's the issue. That's where I'm coming from. Yeah. I have been here a couple of days, just like Don. I mean, that's why we, we, we sort of candidly talk about the whole issue of, of police and whatever, because that's his background. Right. And I respect that, you know what I'm saying? And, and vice versa on my end of the deal. I, I'm a small business person. I've been, I've been around. I've been, I've been involved in a lot of stuff. And uh, that's one of the reasons why I'm bringing it to the table. But I'm also saying, okay, fine, ask me the question. Ask me the question and give me the answer. Mm -hmm. But in all due respect, if you're speaking to someone that doesn't have no idea of being able to do that, I, I can pretty well tell they're so, they're so nervous just being able to ask the question, right, Don? Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Now, uh, I, yeah. I have to put this other part on the table because I think this, it's just as important. Like you say, it have to be inclusive. But I'm also thinking about our media. I'm talking about the, the minority media. Mm -hmm. I'm very familiar with the media. I used to own the Portland Observer newspaper, and then we got the scanner. I also know we got <coughs> El Hispanic and we've got the Asian reporter. Mm -hmm. And what I've found in that particular arena, the Asian reporter doesn't want to cover politics. They won't even talk about endorsements. Right. But yet they're sitting there with the IE for the affirmative action piece right. when the money comes down the pot after the election. Yeah. Okay. And then consequently, the people who are basically mm -hmm. running, who are elected to office will say, okay, fine, I'll get one from that group. Mm -hmm. or I'll get one from this group and et cetera. And then, uh, so in all due respect, the, the, the lead person or the lead group, uh, from the media standpoint, it's political, has been the black media. 
And then the black media has its issues because I've, I've noticed that also too from the standpoint of saying, if anything, we, but we just went through a number of interviews where we, we had the Assembly of Black Affairs here. And uh, the, it's supposed to be Assembly of Black Affairs. But yet the person didn't even identify the blacks that, were, that had been running around the state of Oregon. Again, that's, that's an issue. But we, we, did, we did resolve it here. But then at the end of the day, at the end of the day, when they had the debates and whatever at the so-called convention, uh, because the person was a Republican, all of a sudden they threw that one out sure. mm -hmm. and just maintained this other thing. It's not about Democrats and Republicans. It's about the issues. Yes, it is. It's about issues. <coughs> if you happen to be one, fine. You know, but the bottom line, that was, that was wrong. That was wrong. And secondly, with the, as far as the scan of the Observer newspaper, they should have had every elected, uh, not elected, everybody wanted to run for office on the front page and educate the public. Because the majority of the public wants to know. Yeah. Yeah, they do. Are there folks there are progressive enough to understand what's going down? And if not, i.e., then let's see what we can do to bring them to the table, as you were saying about inclusiveness. But if we got a medium, if we got a medium that's doing just the opposite, and then they too are waiting, if you will, because in most cases the majority community will contact them and say, well, well, well what can we do, blah, blah, blah. Well, to tell you what, just, just come on Martin Luther King Day and drop, <laughs> drop, your, drop a couple of bucks and everything is fine. We'll give you a certificate. You've done it for the year. See, I'm saying that because I, I'm, I'm seeing it happen. And then, and then at the end of the day, we're complaining over here, trying to figure out well, who's communicating our issues. You see what I'm saying? So it's, 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 it's kind of like a double-sided uh, sword, if you will, or whatever, but one's bigger than the other. Let's put it that way. You know what I'm saying? So, so uh, we wanted to do this, this piece because it's very important. I mean, we, we, we become a very small planet. And even within our communities, we're, we're living together. Now we've we got situations right now in the Northeast Portland Corridor where supposedly all the blacks will live. They're being gentrified, and nobody understands why. What's the problem? Right. What's the problem? It's supposed to be just America. You can move anywhere you want to, which is true. But we're still keeping this whole business of the black community. There's no such thing as a That's black right. community. <laughs> it's a community where maybe a few of the folks live there. They're all over the place. Gresham, they're all over the place. Yeah. And when I'm running around there looking at homeless, the majority, in all due respect, are white. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Should I segregate myself from them? No, I'm dealing with the issues. Mm -hmm. And that's who I'm talking with down yeah. there. We're trying to figure out what the issues of homeless are all about. So, you know, so, so I would agree. We, we've got to do something. And media is a very, very important medium. They've got to communicate. But we also have to support it. Most people don't want to pick up the newspaper today. Most yeah. people don't even turn the news on anymore today. They go to the computer. <laughs> they go to the computer or Facebook. Mm -hmm. Well, Facebook is really the, probably about the best medium now mm -hmm. because people can pick it up. Young folks want to pick it up. That's why it's so important. That's why it's so important on the inclusiveness standpoint that they are included. Because if we get to this next generation, it's going to be some real problems. we got some very serious I, I problems. I think what really needs to happen in City Hall is that the white establishment leaders need to do more than just talk. Yeah. They need to walk the walk. They need to support leaders of color. They need to help leaders of color be elected. They need to stop talking about diversity and, and inclusivity. And they need, to, they need to walk the walk. Mm -hmm. Because it seems to me like all they're doing is just saying what's politically correct. We support diversity. We support inclusivity. But when it comes right down to it, their behavior defies what they're saying. Mm -hmm. you, know? you should have seen them at the uh, Oregon Association of Black Affairs. Right. They all said the same thing. Yep, that's right. We support this. We support this. But how many blacks have you actually uh, promoted in your own bureau? Right. Yeah. right. How many Hispanics have you promoted in your own bureau? Yeah. 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 None. But were those questions being asked at the Assembly of Black Affairs? They were not asked. Okay, but then at the same time, they were all endorsed by the Oregon Assembly of Black Affairs. Exactly. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, that is the problem. See, see? That is the problem. Therein lies the problem. You can't have a better community unless everybody has a chance to uh, achieve a better way of life. Otherwise, you will have issues where the police are shooting up young black men mm -hmm. on the streets because they're not mm -hmm. employable. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You're going to have these problems. If you have people who are employable, then you don't have this crime problem. Uh, the states of Massachusetts, Vermont, Connecticut have the lowest crime rates in the United States. Why? Because they spend $18,000 a year in education. We spend $8,400 yeah. a year in education. We spend $30,000 per inmate for incarceration. Mm -hmm. 
Something's got to change. I agree with you. You but can't we get gotta, a Bible in the schoolroom, but you can get one in the song. Yeah, I agree with you. Exactly. <laughs> So it, it, it is a problem. It's a serious problem. We're going, we're going through the election. Now. We, we, we haven't gotten into the, to the general yet. We're just getting over the primary aspect of it. Now the idea is that who's going to be sitting at the table for those mm -hmm. interviews? Well, naturally, mm -hmm. we're definitely going to be there. I'm going to be there for sure. We're going to be there. Right? Don't, yeah, I'm sure. And we're going to be asking about these various I'm issues. I'm always there. But, so it's not too late. My point is that it's not too late to do something. <laughs> you know, at the, at the end of the day, you know, hopefully we can educate these folks who are out there and then they will respond by whether it be talking about a diverse staff or anything of that nature. You got my point. And and uh, in fact, another point that came up to mind with reference to the media and, and from our media aspect of it, and it's typical. You know what I mean? I I, I think about it. There's two black newspapers, Observer and the Scan. I used to own one, the Observer, and I used to always identify. But the fact that they got two black newspapers and not a one have called me. That's just. Uh and not even said just Amazing. even on the phone, uh, or if not, just well, call me, me a name. This. Have you have you heard from the NAACP? Well, I used to be the vice president, and I but have you heard from them? No. Have you heard from the Urban League? No. That's our problem. Okay, okay, okay. How do we solve that? What do you think we should do? I think how, we. I, how do, we do, I, you know, how do you do it? Just straight up. I just. How, how I think I would go over. I just talked to somebody from the Urban League today. Yes. I would go over and bum rush that organization, because they are not doing what they should be doing. Do you know during the housing crisis mm -hmm. or prior to the housing crisis, 69% of the people, uh, African Americans in the city of Portland were homeowners. It is down less than 28%. Wow. It wiped out the community. Gentrification wasn't the problem. Mm -hmm. It wiped out the community. That's why we have a gang problem. We we're going to have a bloodbath this summer. We need yep. police on the streets. Yep. But we created this problem because we allow this passive behavior and the establishment to run things. Mm -hmm. We need change. I agree with you. In fact, I like to ditto that piece on the housing piece. Uh, I can remember knocking on doors when, we, when I first filed to run for office, trying to figure out, well, where are the vets? Where were they living? Mm -hmm. I'm going to run around looking for the vets, you know, so that I can maybe, Don and I can walk up to them and say, <laughs> okay, let's take you down to the VA and get some, get some benefits and whatever. And, uh, and, and you look around it. So you go down to City Hall and knock on the door and say, okay, fine, you, you, you're the housing, you, you got the housing bureau. Here's a card. No, no nothing. No, no, basically, this is where they are, this is where they house. All you hear from a public standpoint in the press is, well, gee whiz, they're all housed now. And we have no problem. The vets are all housed. Where are they? Yeah. My point is that, it's the, my point is that, is that, that, that bureau should know exactly how many houses we need. How many folks are are, are, are homeless? Mm -hmm. you, know, you see what I'm saying? This way, that's that's to me, that's the job. And the same thing in all due respect with the league and, and you know and the people in the community. Okay? How many as you said, how many homes are owned by African Americans? How many? Why did they lose them? I mean just just basic stuff. Yeah. But they never said anything once it happened. So what are they doing? The churches died, everybody died, nothing happened. Nothing happened. That's why we're in the situation we're in now. That's why we need change in City Hall. Yeah. Otherwise, it continues to escalate. So you have this growing population of Hispanics. Yeah. You have one Hispanic for every four kids in public school nowadays, in elementary school. So that means there's 25%. Census show 12%. <laughs> there's really more Hispanics. So when you have a growing population yeah. people, so what's going to happen if you can't employ them, if you can't teach them? We have a trash education system. We have more crime. We have less police. No voc ed. And the other thing about education is that the majority of teachers are white. Yeah, yeah. And they don't know. And if they're not they going to treat yeah. Hispanic students or yeah. students of color equally with the same effort, then those students are going to suffer. You know? They will suffer. Yeah. They will Port say. Portland leadership has no concept of full. We are full. We don't need more people coming in. We can't fix the roads now. Yeah. We can't fund the schools now. We can't hire enough cops now. How many more high rises can we tolerate? Mm -hmm. How much longer is the water going to last? <laughs> How much longer is the electricity going to last? We're full. You can't put 12 gallons in a 10 gallon bucket. And we're at 10 gallons. Wait, we what? don't need it. And we got yeah. Steve Novick. More density, more density. Right. 
Oh, Don, what Don's saying is that we need to take care, We're of, full. We need to take care of the people that are here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> when we can fix the roads and keep, take care of the kids, okay, then maybe we can take a few more people, but we yeah. can't take them now. Yeah. They keep We're coming, saturating though. ourselves stupidly. I know. They keep coming, though. Well, that's but the, I, in all due respect, that's the whole idea behind an election. You know, you hear these comments, and then hopefully you put them down in such a fashion. Well, we got a problem here. We got issues. We're, We're looking for solutions, i.e., the people who are going to be running for. Our, is there anybody out there can have a solution to this problem? And then that's the. To me, that's the election process. Yeah. But we're not doing it. It's always after the fact. Yeah. It's always after the fact. They get the folks that they want, and they sit there, and that like now we've got one mayor, and that's it. Do we have a mayor? We just got one. Really? We have no commissioners. <laughs> They're just sitting there. Mm -hmm. with pet. And I'm not trying to knock on them personally, but that's the structure that we have today. Mm -hmm. I mean, when you can, we, we're, supposed to be, uh, we're supposed to be taxpayers. You know? We're supposed to be a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. But these individuals are treating you like just the opposite. Mm -hmm. you know? It's insulting. Yeah. I, I am glad, though, that the scanner, the, I just have to mention, the scanner did um, endorse Fred Stewart. So I'm happy about that. But I know that, that there are other issues with the scanner that need addressing well, that I don't really understand. I, I understand what happened. <laughs> we'll, we'll leave that one there. But he had to do something mm -hmm. because it, we, we did have the Oregon Voters Digest out there making it, just like mm -hmm. we're talking right now. Yeah. I'd, I'd much rather that Bernie or whomever the others just give us a call and let's sit down and chat. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's not late. Oh. But the back, but the, on the other hand, you can't do this business anymore of saying, okay, fine, well, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go on and, and endorse this guy who we know is going to win. And then he picks up a couple of bucks and then the rest of the community suffers. Mm -hmm. We got problems here. We got yeah. young men and women right here now in this in this area in this city. We have no voc ed. All right. your all yeah. your outlining schools have it, and the purpose for voc ed is to give you the enthusiasm to pick up the pick up your books and read because you have to right. read. Yeah. And voc ed was it was a necessity. We don't have that in this particular community. Mm -hmm. That's an insult. We got right. seniors, if you will, that are eating cat food and stuff like that, and it's mm -hmm. going to get worse than that mm -hmm. because it's called baby boomers, and a lot of folks are. Let's let's do that. We went down to OPB the other day. Well, you know, went down that OPB and said, "Hey, look, what's about what's about the possibility of uh, doing a doing a piece on uh, doing a sh putting together a show for veterans, for veterans, and seniors." Right. I never heard back from her. No, yeah, you, right. you won't. Well, I'm saying that's just another issue we had to follow up on because we're still in the election process. But I, I do want to say I'm thrilled that the articles by Willamette Week and the Oregonian backfired. Okay. Because what it means is more support for Fred Stewart. I just have to say that. Well, more support for community across the board. Yes. The yes. Portland community. We got yes. it. The Portland community's got to recognize we're gonna we, we, no one's going no one's leaving. I mean we we're gonna all be here. So mm -hmm. we need to get to the table and try to figure out let's let's make darn sure we got communication on the table mm -hmm. and we got the issues on the table and solution and it involves all of us. Because it's, it's gonna affect us all. Okay. Well, all across the board, because if a person is not working, guess who has to pick up the tab? Mm -hmm. The person who is working. Right, right. Right. And people need to understand that. That's, that's serious business. Don't, right. It's no sense in getting angry because you will pay. Mm -hmm. Because if you, if, you, if you want more than that, then okay, fine, let's, let's send them into criminal justice, then you pay more of that. Right. You know, see I mean? right. Because I tell you, I can still remember when I was in the Marine Corps and, and I was recruiting, and, and all of a sudden I had my, my social part of me. I was, well, I'm going to go down to the criminal justice system, I'm going to go down to the institution and just, just talk to the folks or whatever. And I, going in the snow and this, that, and the other, I'm tired and going down there. And, and I get down to the institution, and boy, everybody's so nice and happy, all starched up and nice and just well fed, and this, that, and the other. And I'm sitting there looking at it, gee, you gotta be kidding me. Nobody can, they have to worry about paying any bills or nothing like that. They just got a nice, <laughs> nice environment aspect of it. And I gotta drive home in the snow. I mean, I'm just, I'm not, I'm just, I'm just throwing that out there from the standpoint of saying our priorities are wrong. And we got we do have an over incarceration of, yeah. of young men. What do they do when they get out? Right, right. They get on the rolls. Right. Then you got you got some elements say, well, they need jobs. Okay, but well, what about this person who didn't commit the crime? They need jobs too. So what are we going to do? Mm -hmm. They're not even trained before they get out. And I've gone through different kinds of issues, if you will, where people put the other programs, if you will, for the ex offender. Why can't you solve that problem before you let them go? Yeah. Education in, in prisons is so important. That was one of my um, concentrations when I was an undergraduate, is, was studying about education in prisons. And yeah, but you know so what happens important. in education now? They, they, a lot of times it is education. They don't have the high school diploma, right? Yeah. But guess what? If they're in, in, in the institution, they don't have to go to school. It's mm -hmm. their right. 
What do you mean? I've got you in a controlled environment. You will go to school because that's one of the problems that got you there to begin with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So then they're educated, right? So anyway. We have to work on the education problem before. It's huge. They yeah. get there. It's yeah. huge. Um, PPS is probably one of the worst districts in the United States next to uh, Reynolds and uh, mm -hmm. Park Rose yeah. for children of color. Yes, I agree. Mm -hmm. At agree. this present time, PPS is under uh, federal watch by the Department of uh, Education. Yeah. Really? I didn't yes. know that. Well, wow. It's a little secret. No one knows. It's a money nice. maker. <laughs> Everybody knows now. Okay. <laughs> but Landon, it's, yeah. a, it's a money it, maker. It is a money maker. It's a money maker. It is a money if maker. you look at the kinds of dollars that are being pumped oh, here yeah. in Portland <laughs> Public School, it would blow your mind. You'd be better off just giving the parents the money and just let them just do their own. And then They'd the have kid, a job. The kids aren't getting music. They're not getting sports, and they're not getting vocab. They're not learning. They, they, I mean, they're, they're, supposed to, they're supposed to be granted, if you will, an education, doing yeah. the poor... Public school, those, those those formative years, supposed to get the best education they can get, but they're not getting anything. Well, I'll tell you what's even worse about PPS. So, uh, for about three years, uh, between the years of 2011 and uh, or 2010 and 2013, they uh, restricted all students from leaving PPS. So, if you wanted to leave the district and go to another school, like to Centennial or David Douglas, mm -hmm. they would not allow you to leave the PPS system. And so you had to either stay in PPS or if you went to Centennial or David Douglas, you had to pay out of pocket. Okay. Wow. It's about $5,000, which is a violation of your First Amendment, I mean, of, of your mm -hmm. rights uh, mm -hmm. for No Child Left Behind. Mm -hmm. wow. mm -hmm. But these are the kind of criminal yeah. activities yeah. that go on in Portland Public Schools when they say, yeah, we're trying to do better, when they're really not. Because there are, uh, I think there's several thousand parents that every year want to leave PPS and go to a different district, yeah. whether it's Lake Oswego or sure. Westland or sure. whatever, because they have better, right. better programs. But they can't go there because PPS won't release them. Right. And that involves releasing tax funds. Yeah. Sure. That's terrible. They've got an administrator wow. that makes over $100,000 a year and don't teach one kid. E. I know that's not their job, but to me that just galls me. Yeah. If you're a, making that kind of money, you better teach somebody. Yeah, it, it's, it, it's, uh, it's appalling. <coughs> yeah. mm. It's appalling, the process. Uh, the, the fact that King School, for the last 10 years, except for when Miss Duke was teaching them, right. they never make over 20% of the kids, only 20% of the kids or less meet benchmark. This is in the last 10 years, except for the uh, two years I think Miss Duke was teaching over there. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And then once the new principal came, they got rid of her. I sure. read about that story, and I was really, really mm -hmm. upset yeah. by mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Well, hey. Look, where's the camera? Here you are. <laughs> I mean, you're hearing it right here. We got issues. So what do we do? We're going to do something about it. Don't get angry. Yeah, yeah. Talk to your neighbor. Call your official. Call the, call the people who are, are wanting to be elected that you're getting ready to vote on. Okay? Read what you get. Make sure you get a, re a response in regards to what your needs are. They're just not just pretty faces of this, that, and the other get I mean seriously you need to really get down in this issue right here it's it's big it is big it is big think about your kids <clears throat> think about your moms think about you know the whole nine yard get you got to get involved we're going to be a small society and trust me the only other option that you have with your kids nowadays is the criminal justice system that's really a sad note and the way prices are going up with food you can't <laughs> even afford that you know what I'm saying so, so in all due respect, you know, we're getting ready to go, get into the general election. They're going to select the people that are going to be the ones you're going to be voting on. you got two people. Some are going to already be elected. I'm suggesting you make sure you read your voters' pamphlet. Make sure you call those people in before you vote. Make sure you ask them the right question. And when you read your papers or your editorial, write a little note. You can, in fact, you can just scribble anything down and send it in. We have to do that. It's very important. I mean, people are angry. I think we also need to open up discussion about race with oh, yes. white city council members. Honestly, challenge them about their con their their conceptual their their concepts of race and and how and what they think, because there's so many um, just microaggressions that go on. Well, I, you know, I'm agreeing with the with the at the same time. I'm also including. 
uh, the, the minorities, whether you're Asian, Hispanic, yeah. Asian, ask them the question. Yeah. What's my problem? Mm -hmm. Someone says to me, in fact, you may, you, Bruce Broussard said that you don't like me. Ask him the question just that way. Uh, you see what I'm saying? Ask him the question. Don't sit down there going to breakfasts and this, that, and the other and, and, and paying the dude and say, I've done this for blacks this, this year or Hispanics or Asians or whatever. <laughs> Tell them to come up with a speaker that's going to educate you about the relationship that you have with one another. Yeah. Don't just play the, that kind of game. Don't mm -hmm. sit up there on the diocese. Learn what's going on. Ask them the question. You're paying for it. Ask them the question. That's why I, I put names out. I don't sit around and play games with it. I want to buy, I'd like to pick up that scanner tomorrow just because I, I pick up all the papers. But I want to read something. I want to get educated. That's what it's there for. So why? Okay, uh, everybody, everybody, I got about another two, about another two minutes. Real quick, like, man, real quick. Give me, give me about 50, 50, 30 seconds of your thought, real quick, like. Boatland need a duke. There you go. <laughs> me? Okay. Um, I hope that people vote for Fred Stewart. There you go. You gotta be Fred. Absolutely. Okay. Vote for Bruce and Don. Vote for Fred Stewart. And Bruce and Don. Vote for Bruce. Bruce and Don. And we got to stop his contact of being not full enough. You know, okay. we've got more than we need. Okay. Read your voters pamphlet again and consider voting for me. I appreciate it. Okay. Good. Well, look, we got about um, we got about two minutes left, and uh, I think I've said a lot, if you will. I think yeah. I have. You know what I'm saying? And <laughs> and I'm asking anybody out there would like to come and sound right here, and i.e. share your thoughts. Please, be our guest. Be my guest. I would say to the black newspapers, to the Hispanic newspapers, to the Asian newspapers, be my guest. I want you to come down here and, and, re and respond to what, you, what your responsibilities are, and that is to communicate for your respective culture. Very important to the majority community. Yes. And, to those, and to those Willamette Weeks and the Oregonians and those guys, whatever, give me a call. Come here. When I call you up and ask you to come down here and, and I.e. Join, join me and I.e. talking to whatever issue there is, please. Hey, come on over. Talk. That's not quick play. We'll even give them an escort That's if fair. they don't feel Can safe. Can we do that? Don't you pick them up? I'll pick them up. No problem. No I'll problem. I'll get my escort. <laughs> That's, don't feel good. safe. We'll fix, we'll fix you up. We'll, You'll fix we'll it up. We'll, we'll protect you. But you know, like I say, we, 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 we've, uh, we, we've shared our thoughts and our feelings. These are real. These are real folks, by the way, folks. I want you to know, I wouldn't have invited them otherwise because they know how I am. So, and I know how they are. But these are real, real folks, you know. I mean, these are folks that you, they've gone beyond that other area aspect of it. We're just thinking about the other folks who are not there yet. That's causing them, they're having some real serious problems. And yeah. anything I can do, you understand what I'm saying? That's really what we're talking about. Well, and, and the other reason I got involved in uh, Fred Stewart's campaign was because I believed in him. And the reason that I wrote the um, editorial I wrote was because I was so angry about the the suffering his mother went through and okay. what he went through because okay. he was so hurt by that. So yeah, okay. vote for Fred Stewart. <laughs> All right, good. Okay, and we'll Bruce. get the credit. Thanks, thanks very much for joining us, and share this with your family, with your friends, folks, and everybody, and whatever, because it's it's a beautiful word. It's back as George Page used to always say on KBOO, back to what you believe in. Have a good one. God bless. Take care. <laughs> we, we we can keep talking. We got to talk.